All right, so today we're talking about forces and we're talking about gravity. Um, the first thing we need to remember about gravity is it is what's called an attractive force. It's an attractive force. Okay, that does not mean it's good looking. Apples. I mean, my apple's good looking, but gravity itself is not good looking. When I'm saying attractive, I mean that if you go visit Titan, which is one of Saturn's moons, it's a very important moon because it may actually fit kind of what we need for life. Um, and if you went to go visit there, we've never gotten people that far, but if, if you did and you were going to go to land, Titan's gravity is not going to be like, no, thank you, boop, and kick you off. You can't walk around and all of a sudden gravity like, nope, don't like you, repel, boop, and you go flying through the air. Gravity doesn't work like that. It does not repel. It is an attractive force. Okay, and it's attractive for any objects with mass experience gravity. All objects with mass experience gravity. All the others with gravity. And other things. So... Gravity is the attractive force between two objects. Now, I want you to write these next two bullet points, and then we're going to talk about them, okay? So, it is directly proportional to the products of the masses. And it is inversely proportional to the distance between them. directly proportional to the products of the masses. I know that sometimes our mathematical relationships aren't great. So what that means is that if you increase the mass, you increase the force. If you decrease the mass, you decrease the force. They go up and down together. So it's inversely proportional to the distance between them, which means as you increase the distance, as you go farther away, the force decreases. This has some interesting interactions. Um, when you talk about like the Earth and the Moon and the Earth and the Sun, the Sun has more mass than the Earth or the Moon by a lot, but it is further away. The moon, I know it looks, I mean, it is far away, but in the scope of space, it's pretty close to us. 
That's why the moon has a greater effect on the tides than the sun does because while it's smaller, it is a lot closer to us. Does that make sense? So the more something has mass, the more gravity attraction there is. Um, so this is our new formula. It is F equals big G times the two masses divided by the radius squared. Okay, um, so earlier it's a distance between them, but now I'm putting radius. The reason being is a lot of time these problems are looked at, what is the gravitational force of attraction of Earth and the Moon, of Io and Saturn, of two asteroids. And in cases like that, a lot of that mass is going to be in the center of those objects. So if you're looking at the gravitational force of attraction between me and the Earth, I know it's the holiday season. I know that my pants might be a little bit tighter. We're not going to judge. But my radius is nothing compared to Earth's right now. I mean, we've still got the rest of the holidays to get through, so who knows. But right now, it's insignificant compared to Earth. And when we use the masses and the radiuses of these planets, um, they're rounded off. Earth's mass is 5.96 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. But all those decimal places that I lost doing that scientific notation, those aren't zeros, right? They're probably actually numbers. But I don't have time to type in every single number on that times 10 to the 24. I, just, I don't have that time. You don't have that time, and honestly, the chances of you make a mistake are high. There's 24 of them. So we kinda, we've kind of rounded some. There's some rounding there. Um, so we do the radius because you cannot use the outside of Earth and the outside of the moon. The masses are in the middle. Any questions about that? All right. Our gravitational constant, our big G, does not change. It is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th Newton meter squared over kilogram squared. What is that negative? Okay, so it would mean that you have 0 0.4567. Ten, six, six, seven. So that's what that number is. So that negative 11 is all the zeros. I have to move my decimal place 11 times to get that. Yes, scientific notation. Uh, this this is kilogram squared. All right. So the problem with some of these like ideas is that it's hard to visualize. What I'm telling you is that I'm standing here, I have a mass, you have a mass. There is a force of gravity of attraction between us. Force of gravity, nothing else, I don't need any comments. That doesn't seem right. I'm not moving towards you, you're not moving towards me. So this was actually proved by an experiment. I'm going to show you, I'm actually going to kind of fast forward through the experiment because the guy talks a lot. Um, but it was first done by a scientist named Cavendish. And he proved that two masses, if allowed to exist in a frictionless environment, will move towards one another. So, we're going to do this. And we're not, that's not the one. That's not the one. Here it is. All right. So I'm going to kind of walk you through this because I have it muted. And I will post this link. You can go watch it. It's a five-minute video. Um, basically, what this teacher does at first is he has a line. You can kind of see it a little bit. 
suspended and he has a meter stick. And so that meter stick he attached to equal masses. And he lets it sit for a long time and he makes small adjustments and he moves things around so that by the time he is done, this is stable. It is not moving. It's not affected by the air conditioning or a random wind. Um, the ceiling is level. It's not moving because of anything at all. It is stationary. So we're going to... Oh, I hope it'll let me hide that. So you can see he's still adjusting things. Okay, now, once he has everything adjusted, he puts down two large masses. He puts two bowling balls. And you can see that there is a clock down here. And so this is a sped up video. What are those masses doing? They are going towards the large masses. Now, is it doing it very quickly? Would this be something that you want to sit down and watch happen? No. Nope. Be like paint drying. But over time, you can see that the two masses were attracted to one another. So if he had moved the, the bowling balls further out, they would have continued to move. He could have gotten them to go all the way around. Um, so this was actually, this can be done. You could do this if you wanted to. I mean, again, I don't want to tell you how to use your free time. How do you know this is much um, I mean, why would anybody want to fake such a boring experiment? Try it. Yes. So it depends on the masses, and it depends on the, on, like, the bigger the masses, the farther away they can be and still have the attraction. You're always going to have a force of attraction. It's just going to be smaller as you increase the distance. So the mass isn't like the size, it's the weight. Uh -huh. kind of. So like what if, it's like it has the weight of the sun, but it's like very tiny. It's about to use. Because of the distance. Yeah. Yes. So would it still have the same amount of gravity or would it be I... Can you restate what you're asking me? If I had a ball, you have a ball. The same mass as the sun. Okay, big ball. Right. Big heavy ball. Yeah. But it wasn't nearly as big as the sun. Okay, super. You have a black hole. Black hole. Is that what that? I mean, it's something that's that small and that dense. Okay. I mean, it's not quite a black hole because you need a slightly bigger, probably a bigger star. But well, anyway. My question is the size of the mass. Um, because that's going to affect that radius. So that's going to affect the distance between them. Oh, ah, sorry. Uh, any other questions before we move forward? All right. Um, we're going to look at this first example. Uh, it says calculate the gravitational force of attraction between two. Um, does anyone remember what PB is? It starts with an L. You're not supposed to like eat it. Club. I mean, don't eat oh, lead. 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 Oh, lead. Oh, PB is lead. Uh, PR table of elements. Your chemistry teacher will be so proud right now. I do. Two less letters I have to write. Fe. Fe. Yeah, because it's really female. Do you have an iron desk at home? That's weird, this humidity. It'd be all rusty. It'd be very rusty in that iron humidity. All right, so you have an attraction between two lead balls, 10 and 20 kilograms, that are 10 centimeters apart. So the first thing I got, we've got to do is take that radius and make sure it's in meters, because we need it in meters. So I'm going to take that 10 centimeters to 0.1 meters. I have my masses. It does not matter which one's one versus two. It has because you're multiplying them, so that does not matter. So I'm using my formula from up here. The force of attraction is going to be G times 10 times 20 over 0.1 squared. 
All right, the hardest part about these equations are to make sure that you are putting them into your calculator correctly. So we have to be very intentional about how we're going to do that. Um, I leave the G to the last myself. All right, so the first thing I do is the top, those, those masses. So we're going to do 10 times 20. Enter. Perfect. I'm going to divide it by that 0.1 squared. Get 20,000. Now, I put my 0.1 squared in parentheses. Um, because a lot of these problems um, use very big numbers or very small numbers, and I want my square to incorporate all of them. So it's a good habit to do. All right, so my answer is not 20,000, because what do I still need, need to multiply? G. So then I'm going to do times. I'm going to do 6.67. I'm going to hit my second button. I'm going to hit my comma button. It gives me an E. That E is times 10. So I don't have to write my times 10. And then I go negative 11. I got a quick spot. I got 0. 0.00001324. Mm -hmm. That's your answer? Uh, this, the comma is above the 7. <laughs> so you'd hit the second and the button above the 7 if your calculator is like mine. Second comma. So you end up with 1.334 times 10 to the negative 6 newtons. It is a force. <coughs> and the units from that gravitational constant do cancel out because this becomes kilograms squared up here, and it cancels out with this one. This is metered squared, and it cancels out with this one, so we are just left in newtons. All right, Ms. Clark, does it seem that hard? This is easy. Uh, you can write E. You had better not give me 1.334 minus 6 newtons, though. That would be wrong. But if you want to write 1.334 E times uh, E negative 6, that's fine. All right, but let's look at the second one. It says calculate the gravitational force of attraction between a person with a mass of 102 kilograms and Earth. Earth has a mass of 5.96 times 10 to the 24th kilograms and a radius of 6.37 times 10 to the 6 meters. So we've got to do it the same way. F equals big G 102 times 5.96 times 10 to the 24th over uh, 6.37 times 10 to the 6 squared. That's the formula right there that I'm using. Gravitational constant times the mass of 1 times the mass of 2 divided by the radius between them squared. That is so many numbers. This is why it's calculator work. It's very important to watch how you're putting things into the calculator. This is not something you're going to be able to work out in your head. So, again, we're going to do 102 times 5.96 second comma to the 24th. And you should get 6.0792 times 10 to the 26th. Please make sure that you're getting the same numbers as me. Because I want to make sure that my squared doesn't get thrown into my um, exponent. Uh, you got error because you don't need to capitalize. You don't need to put the put the square up. Yeah, 102 times 5.96. Um, use E and then type in 24, and it 
it does everything else for you. All right, at that point, now I've got to do the bottom. But I separate out my square because I don't want to accidentally put it with my 6 and, we'll, and have this to the 60 seconds. So I like to put two parentheses. Again, this is just how I make sure I don't make a dumb calculated mistake. I put 6.37 times 10 to the 6 squared. Close my parentheses. Am I doing an extra step? Absolutely. You can totally do this without parentheses, but this works every time for me. So it, I'm more confident doing it this way. And I get 1.498192321 times 10 to the 13th. Please make sure you get that same number. Because you squared your six. Oh yeah, you can totally have one that doesn't have an e. Yeah, I don't have an e. Um, just again, I'm putting my parentheses here between my six and my two to make sure that my two does not get combined on that six or square that six in some weird way. Um, my parentheses to make sure that it's keeping it all separate. I am still not done. Now I got to multiply it by that gravitational constant times 6.67 times 10 to the negative. Whoops. Hold on. Second comma to negative 11. Yeah, 999 newtons. If you refer back to your warm up from today. You will see that when I used 9.81 and 102 mass on Earth, I got 1,000 newtons. Here I got 999. This is where we came up with the 9.8. This is how we did it. Yes. Is we found this equation and used it to find that 9.8 value. Does anyone have any questions about this? Okay. Again, the hardest part of this is doing that calculator work, and we will be practicing some more of this on Tuesday. Um, for right now, underneath your warm-up, there's a gravitational lab. The link is posted on the Google Classroom, and there will be a quiz over everything on Monday. So this lab gets put into your notebook, and then you're going to be able to reference that on Monday for your quiz.